Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 67 of my modded Factorio playthrough. Enjoy. There's something else we can do to make life easier, and that is delivering barrels automatically and barreling this stuff automatically so we don't have to co keep coming and delivering barrels over and over because that would get really annoying. It's going to consume a lot of steel because we're going to have a lot of barrels sitting on belts not getting used, but in the long run, it's just going to be way less work. And way less work sounds amazing. So, since we want this tank to be empty, since it's a pure byproduct, fill hydrogen gas barrel. And then we need to have two lines here one line delivering barrels, and one line retrieving barrels. The delivering barrels we'll come up here and the retrieving barrels will go down there so one goes in one goes out and we need some electricity probably some lights too no, but those are going to pr produce some light, so we're probably okay. So where are the barrels going to go? Well, right now they're stored here, but I don't want to just put giant warehouses in the middle of the factory if we don't need to. And we've got some empty space out here, so why not put them out here instead? So let's build another warehouse, because we've already got a full one. Let's see, let's do it right there. Now, we're going to have different uh, barreled byproducts in the future, so I'm actually going to put a filter inserter right here and say only pick up hydrogen gas barrels so the barrels will be sorted in the warehouse appropriate for that barrel. Seems like a good place as any to just come in right here. Uh, it might be cleaner. Let's do that. And now we need to deliver barrels and how to get the barrels here. Well, we're producing them all the way down here. So the question is, what's the easiest way to get those barrels up here? Well, it's a little annoying, but it might just be running a belt more or less straight up here, and then somehow getting it up here. Probably. Maybe somewhere up here. So let's run this belt backwards to figure out the best way to do it. Yeah, probably just up along this right here. Yeah, probably along here. And then go underneath here. So, we need to produce more barrels than we're making because we're going to have more things we're going to need to barrel in the future. Let's make three more. And we don't need to pick them up. So we'll get rid of this chest. Oh yeah, now that I think about it, I think we didn't have enough inserters on this wall, this wall builder here. So I'll just put some inserters there. See if that's balanced. Seems like it. Okay, so we had yellow, yellow, yellow. Put one up there. There we go. 
I'm gonna do something a little different here. Do we have any silos? No. Okay, let's make a barrel silo. <laughs> if that makes any sense. And two loaders. We can use a circuit network to make this a little cleaner. In, out. Let's shut this off for a second. Let's make a circuit network. We're going to say that this belt can only activate if the silo has less than, let's say, how about 40 barrels like it has now? Right now it's off because it has that. The reason why I'm doing this is because barrels are very large. You see how they only go in stacks of 10? So if we're changing belts around or uh, we're unbarreling liquids that we're using, we're going to end up having a lot of barrels left over. And it's really hard to put them back on the bus. So by creating a silo, we have a place where we can just drop them in and then walk, walk off and do our thing. Now, you could do it. Another way you can do it is by limiting the silo like this. But then the problem is, is, if you have barrels and you try to put them in, it won't let you because it's locked. So by doing, by controlling it with the circuit network, it means that any extra barrels will be placed in here and they will be consumed before more new barrels are produced. So see how we put a bunch of barrels in here? And actually, uh, let's go pick up all of the other spare barrels in the factory because we need to put those in there as well. I'm just trying to minimize the amount of barrels we build. Actually, let's drain this entire building. There we go. Forgot to connect that. Now we can pick up all the spare barrels, which there actually weren't that many. I'll just leave all those barrels in there for now. All right, so we need to run these barrels down. Looks like actually we're low on belts again, so I might as well pick up some more. Yoink. And let's just go straight up. And this is going to take a lot of barrels. You see how quickly that thing's emptying of all its barrels? And then they're going to start filling it up again. So let's follow the barrels to where they're going and see the effect. So the tanks are okay. It looks like, actually, yep, that one just switched to yellow because it's half full and it's kind of like emergency because it really shouldn't. It should always be empty. So the barrels get sucked up. Creates the hydrogen gas barrels and you can see that the gas tank is now decreasing. So these barrels will lazily find themselves out here. Looks like we need some power lines. And we've got a ton of extra barrels sitting here. There we go, now we don't have to deliver barrels manually anymore. Looks like this setup is completed. So I'm going to pick up all of the bricks and let it do a whole nother set of bricks. Because we actually have a small use for these things. Previously, I mentioned that one of the disadvantages to using bricks to mark where belts should go is that you see how it it kind of has that jump to it because you're going over something that increases your walk speed to something that does not increase your walk speed. However, now that we have clay bricks, we can place them in the middle. They're two separate materials, so we can visually tell the difference, but the walk speed is the same. So now there's no jump in speed. See how now we can walk across it with no speed change. So that's the kind of thing that's a little annoying, so I like to take care of it. And uh, it does require a ton of bricks to lay all these paths down. 
pizza. That's why we needed to make so many. It can be a little different to make these when you're walking over these uh, the belts because they like to jump your character around. Did almost the entire thing without messing up and then right in the end, placed them a little too far over. Okay. There we go. It's kind of colorful looking. I didn't really care about the colors, but I'm just in it for the smoother walk speed. So, 13 bricks left. That was really close. So, I believe all of that was just in preparation for getting uh, the water down here. We needed to make some room for some water processing. So the hydro plant, it's a very large place. What we need, we basically need two different processing uh, chains here. We need to make the purified water to start the process, and then we need to clean the sulfuric waste water to both get some purified water back and also to get that sulfur that we were after. So one half is to make the purified water and the other half is to clean the sulfuric water. Now, how much we need is kind of weird. So first, let's actually calculate the raw amount that we need. We need uh, 50 purified water every four seconds times 2.25 processing speed and then times eight for our eight machines. So we need 225 purified water. But that doesn't mean 225 purified water from regular water because we're getting some water back. You see, when we put a hundred purified water in, it's 50 purified water becomes 50 sulfuric water, so it's one to one. So if we put a hundred water in, we can actually recover 70 of it. So we only need 30% uh, of that original amount because we're recovering it. And that is 67.5. See these machines work at a speed of one, and this one machine will produce a hundred purified water. So we need one water purifier. We'll worry about how many of these we need in a second. So we'll leave that there and let's make the purified water. Right, so we need to space it out a little bit. It's probably like one, two, three. Uh, yes, that should be okay. Let's make our water purification. So water purification, 150 water goes in, we get our 100 purified water, and then we get 20 saline water. And I mentioned saline water because uh, we could make saline water with washing plants. So technically saline water is an infinite resource, but it's also a fairly low value resource. But uh, let's hook up the pipe here. And we've already got a fresh water thing, so we're even putting more stress on this. But the pipe is mostly full. So it's not being overloaded. So let's put something else on it. Now the purified water is the thing we want. So let's make a storage tank for it. We'll use the liquid storage tank. There's really no difference, technically, but if you're role-playing, you'd want a liquid storage tank for liquids. So let's place this... I don't know, like... Well, how many spaces was this across? I guess it was three from that, so it would be five. One, two, three, four, five. Something like that. I'm gonna make that stackable if possible. So that's the water going in, and then we need another storage tank, we're out of iron, for the saline water. Let's place that one, two, three above. One, two, three. The creation of purified water is something we need to consider because we're going to be producing 
purified water from multiple sources. The ultimate source is here, but also we're going to be processing the sulfuric wastewater back into purified water. So there, this is another tank that needs to have room in the top. It can't be empty, but it can't be full. So we need to uh, do some logic to that. And since there's no products going in or out to the hydro plant uh, that inserters do, uh, we're going to have to do it with a pump. This is a pretty easy place to do it. Let's do something like that. Probably put a light in there. And let's hook up a signal network. And say, since that holds 80,000, that purified water has to be less than 40,000. And if it is, to pump water through and to turn it on. Now it's not running because we haven't hooked up saline water yet. So let's see, what's the easiest way to do it? Probably just going straight across like this, I guess. Now that there's room, this is going to keep filling up. Uh, we could make some signal lights. Uh, uh, let's just use the same template and change it to our needs. So we need eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And lights and poles. we want to adjust this to be purified water and since we want it to be in the middle this is an example where we can have no signal lights because it should always be at 40,000 if it's not at 40,000 it means we have a problem but because it might vary slightly above 40 or below 40 let's say if it's above 50,000 then something's gone wrong so this one right here will say if the water is above 50,000, turn on a yellow light as warning. And this one will be, let's say if it's less than 30,000, then we have a problem. If it's less than 30,000, put out a yellow light. And that's yellow. And this one will be, let's say, if we're very close to full, so let's say we're 70,000, we're more than 70,000, then we're critical because then the whole process is going to stop. If we're above 70,000, hit a red light, which means we have some problems. And then this one will be red. It's interesting how these lights are all done differently. <laughs> Maybe I should do a new one. Actually, but the, uh, the star seemed to work pretty well. Um, oh no, it didn't because of that. Okay. Red. Equal to red. Equal to one. Just so it's symmetrical. And let's say if we're less than 10,000, then we have a big problem. And I'll put a red light. So... Right now, we have a yellow light showing that the tank is low, but not critically low. And these are only warning lights, so there's going to be no green lights on this, so ideally we would see no lights at all. Let's copy this new pattern. And let's put it in place. Let's see. Let's modify it, though. Let's add the uh, light and there we go. Okay, now this one is actually similar to this one back here where none of the lights ideally would be on. So let's copy it directly. No, but they're not the same. Oh well. Okay. There we go. You see how that clicked off? Because 
now it's above the 30,000 and it's acceptably in the middle. Oh, that's... Did I set this one up incorrectly? Yes. This one should have been oxygen. There we go. So saline water is building up fairly slowly, so it's not too big a deal, but uh, let's see, saline water. Uh, how did we have this one set up as far as percentages? It's 25%, 50, or no, that one was 75%, I believe. So 75% full. So this one is saline water is in excess of 60,000. I believe this one was half. So the saline water is excess of 40,000. That one was saline water less than 40,000. This one is uh, saline water less than 20,000. There we go. But that light isn't turning on when it should. Oh, because it's... This one needs to be green. There we go. So is this one not correct? Okay. Good. Two green lights is what you want to see. Two green lights, two green lights. And then two green lights on here. Excellent. And then no lights on this. Let's see how the machine turned off, because now it's uh, at 40,000. A little bit more, because when this turns off, the machine still has to process everything it has inside the pipes. But another thing we can do... is deliver those saline water bottles. Uh, the sa <laughs> water bottles. Salt water bottle. Uh, the, the saline uh, barrels. Yeah, you shouldn't drink saline water. It'd be not good. Yeah, let's put that over there. So that it goes in up that way and then down that way. It's the output this way and then... Yep, there, that goes up there. Excellent. Okay, so now we need to do the barreling pump. Assuming we don't have any in here. I don't think so. Let's move it up a little bit. Now we can place it one lower. So we need to fill saline water barrel. So that one is the in. And long sighted near will be out because this one is a non near. Okay, that looks pretty symmetrical. Then we had a power pole somewhere over there. Oops, that one didn't need to be long though. So just regular near. There we go. You can see that thing's basically empty now. So both saline and hydrogen's gonna be finding their way down here, which means we need another warehouse. the other side, picking up the saline barrels. Oops, I made that one a near. I guess it doesn't really matter, but... Boom. So, there goes the saline. And now we don't have to deal with saline. Now it's going to be stored automatically. Luckily, we're not going to be producing very much of it, so it's not really going to be too big a deal. That's all the time we have for today, so I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching.